Okay guys, now that I finally got my garage work CNC up and running out here in my shop, uh, I thought I would start doing a few short videos to try to help answer some questions that I see all the time. Uh, some of these things will apply to just the garage work CNC, some of them will apply to the garage work CNC, a Gatton CNC, and pretty much any CNC for that matter. So uh, anyway, I'm going to start with one about the touch plate. Uh, I was talking with a fellow last night who was having some issues getting his touch plate to work uh, and we finally got it going and I kind of wanted to uh, shoot a little video video here today to show you how I wire mine up and a couple of things that you have to watch out for. So before we get started here let me bring you all in here close so you can see what's going on and we'll get started talking about how I wire this up. Okay, I hope I've got the camera shot where you can, in this shot, you can see the, the router, the drive board, expect particularly this breakout board right here, and the Mach 3. Um, real quick, I just this is just a simple piece of uh, one and a half by one and a half by one eighth aluminum angle. Uh, it's got uh, two wires running to it, a red and a black, and I buy this uh, from... Uh, I think I got this off of Amazon. It's just uh, 18 gauge stranded wire. It's actually called speaker cable is what it was called, but it works perfect for running these homing switches and touch plates and e-stops and that kind of thing. Um, I have in Mach 3, uh, I have my uh, digital, uh, or the, actually you use the probe. I have that enabled. Uh, I have port 1 and I have it set to pin 11 and I actually have the check mark there for it to be active low. Uh, that's how mine is set up in Mach 3. And if you look right here, you will see a little green light digitized. Let me kind of move out of the way over here. And when I touch the plate and my ground wire together, you'll see that light come on. And that's what you should get when uh, you're trying to set zero and it comes down and touches that plate. Um, as I said, in Mach 3, I have it set to pin 11, which means the red wire is coming up here and going through to pin 11 here on my breakout board. And you can put a ground on here if you only have one. Um, you know, if this is the only thing you're adding to your machine, you can use the ground that's right here on the breakout board. Uh, I believe it's actually it's up here where this black wire is but in my case since I have a lot of other things you can't get all these wires crammed into that one spot for ground so what I do is I have a, a black wire running from ground up to a terminal block and I'll show you this right here it's basically running to one of these uh, 12, uh, 12 slot terminal blocks and you can take one of these, which are insulated uh, four pins, and you can stick those on one side, just as I've done here. And basically, I'm making this whole bar kind of like a bus bar or a grounding bar. So I run the one wire from anywhere over here down to my ground on my breakout board. And then all the other cables that I'm running, since I can't fit them in there, I just connect them anywhere along this thing and that will make my my other ground so these things are really cheap i think you can get uh i believe it's a set of two of these for about five bucks off of amazon these things here uh, they come in a set of four two black and two red and you can cut these off if you don't need all 12 of them um, and these are about uh about eight bucks i think seven or eight bucks something like that so very inexpensive I'll have links to all this stuff down below in the video description if anybody wants to get the exact same thing I've got here. So, so that's how it's wired up. And like I said, when you touch your your plate here, you should get the green light right here when it's uh, digitized. So the way this would work is you would connect this to your bit, the alligator clip like so. And then as you're bringing this down, let me try to get over here out of the way again. As you're bringing this down and it touches the bit, you see the light come on. 
Now, one reason this guy was having trouble last night is I asked him, I said, well, do you have a router that's grounded? And he said, well, I don't know. He, he unplugged it and plugged it back in. And then he came back and he says, okay, all of a sudden it's working. And what happens is, and I, right now I've got this router. This is a Porter Cable 690. I've got it unplugged. Uh, so that's why I'm using the, the ground wire here. But I'm going to take that ground wire off for a second. And I'm going to plug this back in to the electricity. So now, even though I don't have this ground wire attached at all, you'll see that when I touch this aluminum plate, the digitized light over there is coming on. So, and that's because uh, it's getting the grounding through the, uh, the router itself. So you need to know if you have problems getting this to work, uh, you know, you try this with the both wires and for some reason the light's staying on or it's not working correctly, it's probably because you've got a ground running through your, your router and you don't really need to use this. You don't have to take it off. You can leave it on there in case you switch out a router later and uh, it's not grounded. You can use it. On my Gatton CNC around in the garage, you, when I'm using a spindle, uh, I do have to attach this alligator clip to a bolt on the uh, router mount to get it to ground to get that to work. But on this case, when I've got the router plugged in, it works fine like that. So I hope that uh, I hope that clears some things up about uh, about it's a simple touch plate. Okay, one other thing you're going to need to do to get the touch plate to work properly is you have to add a script to this Auto Tool Zero. Auto Tool Zero. And to do that, you come over here on the on your main program run page in Mach 3. Uh, you hit uh, operator and then come down and hit edit button script and all the buttons that are allowed to be uh, edited or flashing so then you just click on the auto tool zero and this is a script that uh, I got from uh, Steve over at uh, Guru Brew I'm gonna have a link to this script down in the description so you can go get it all you got to do is get it put it in notepad or whatever and then copy and paste it. Uh, the only thing you have to worry about, and I hope this is showing up well enough on here, but right here uh, where mine says 0.125, you have to make sure that that thickness is whatever the thickness is of your actual uh, touch plate. If it's quarter inch, then you put 0.25. If it's uh, 060, then you put 0.060. Actually, when you get this script, uh, it, it says 060 because that's what Steve was using over there at Guru, uh, Guru Brew. So I have uh, taken calipers and measured mine and mine it measures right at 1.125. So that's what I've got. So once you cut and paste this into there, you can just save it and then exit out. Okay, so to get this to work, uh, you just after you've zeroed your X and Y, you set your touch plate up under your bit. You uh, you know jog it down somewhat close. Hit Auto Tool Zero button. You'll see the dwell over here is flashing, and it will lower itself until it touches the plate, and then it will raise back up to one inch. So then you can then move your plate out of the way. Hit Go to Zero, and it should be either right on top of your material or right on top of your uh, machine bed whichever uh, whichever you were had your touch plate setting on so that's all there is to it okay guys I hope that clears up any questions that you might have had about uh, wiring up a, a simple touch plate to your machine uh, it's really pretty easy to do and like I said I'll have the links to the script that uh, Steve at Guru Brew used uh, down in the description you can go get it the only thing you have to do is make sure you edit it if your plate thickness is different than what he had in the script originally uh, just make sure you check that also I'll have links to all these other little goodies that I was talking about earlier down in the description um, they're really handy to have I, as you can see I keep lots of them on hand here um, so anyway I want to thank everybody for watching if you have another uh, question or something you'd like to see this thing do, uh, just leave me a comment down below in this video 
or uh, shoot me an email or whatever. I'm happy to try to show, uh, you know, it's one of the reasons why I put this machine out here rather than to be able to cut and while I'm uh, running my lathe or something like that. But I'm happy to show uh, whatever you want to see on this thing. I, did, I have seen some people ask about will the Garage Works cut aluminum. So you can expect to see a video on this thing cutting aluminum uh, probably in the next week or so, just whenever I can get one made and get it edited. So anyway, I appreciate you all watching, and we'll talk to you all later.